Someone who was on that call, Congressional Black Caucus member, Democratic Congresswoman Jennifer McClellan. It's good to see you, Representative. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So instead of me characterizing what the call was, how would you characterize why this call happened? Well, first of all, uh, the call is still going on, uh, and it was for the president to come on and thank members of the Black Caucus for our consistent support, helping him get elected in 2020, our consistent support. Now there was a lot of very strong support that continues for the president, not only among the CBC members, uh, but in our communities and among black voters, black grassroots activists uh, and leadership and, and many of us on the call expressed that, what we are hearing in our districts, and that uh, the black community remains with President Biden and Vice President Harris. Anybody uh, make the case for Vice President Harris to take over the ticket? Chris, I'm not going to get into who said what on a on a off the record call, uh, but it was overall the um, Black Caucus listening to the president uh, talk about his agenda for the black community to finish uh, the job of addressing over 300 years of uh, the legacy of slavery and Jim Crow and to reiterate mm -hmm. the progress we've made together and what still needs to be done. And we're looking forward to doing that. When you were home um, over the 4th of July, I'm sure people were curious about this. Um, what were you telling them about what you think happens with the president? Well, I was mostly listening, honestly, and what I heard were people who were extremely concerned about what the Supreme Court uh, did in the last two days of its term, mm -hmm. uh, what it has done mm -hmm. since the fall of Roe, that they have overturned over 40 years of precedent on reproductive freedom, on affirmative action, uh, that they've given uh, the president, whoever it is, carte blanche to do whatever they want in the, under the cloak of official duties, and they're worried about what Donald Trump would do with that carte blanche in a second mm. term. They're worried about Project 2025 and, uh, and what a president who talks about black jobs, uh, when we all know he meant that mm. as a derogatory term in an effort to pit mm. black people against immigrants, they're worried about a, what a second Trump term would mean and they're determined not to let it happen. That's what I heard uh, at home. Mm. That's what I heard at the Essence Festival. That's what I heard in Michigan when I went to campaign there. That's what I heard uh, in, a, in a black church in New Orleans over the weekend campaigning for the president. So you think, uh, Representative, that among your constituents and the people that uh, you're developing an understanding of in general, that fear of Trump trumps concerns about Biden's fitness? I think it's twofold. I think what I'm hearing in my district is what I firmly believe, and that is Joe Biden on his worst day is far better than Donald Trump on his best day. That they understand that Joe Biden has a team supporting him, including Vice President Harris, and a cabinet that are fully behind him, whereas the former president has uh, a former team that is not with him because they understand just how dangerous he is. The team issue is real. Um, but I do think if you guys are going to play to the team dynamic, you got to introduce the country to who the team is uh, and make sure that they're out there speaking for the president if you want them to, to see him as a proxy. Um, last question. Do you have any doubts about President Biden's ability to be at the level he needs to be for four more years. Look, Chris, as someone who just buried two family members, I can't predict that what I can do in four years. Uh, but what I do know is the president gets up every day focused on what is in the best interest of the country. And I trust him to do that. I trust him that if he gets to a point where he can't do that, that he will defer uh, to the vice president um, and he will do continue to hold the best interest of the country forward. Now, the vice president has been out on the campaign trail. She gave a very forceful uh, speech at the Essence Festival. She's been out talking about uh, black economic wealth, what this administration has done, protecting reproductive freedom. Um, and she will continue to do that. And we will make sure that the team, including the Congressional Black Caucus, will be out talking about the very clear mm -hmm. contrast between the Biden-Harris administration that is focused on continuing to build an economy that leaves no one behind, protect reproductive freedoms, and address climate change, 
versus the former president and whoever his team is that he's going to pick that will be yes people mm. that will allow him to get retribution against his enemies. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.